This is Susan Bassey. Since 2016, mainstream media has focused nearly all of its effort and resources on our national elections. And we have focused on local elections because it is in the elections in our communities that we determine who will be our sheriffs, our district attorneys, our politicians, and our judges. And these elections deserve just as much transparency and accountability as the national elections because they serve to affect our lives the most. And I thought the best way to describe our investigation of the 2018 election in Santa Clara County, where a judge was recalled and a prosecutor was elected to take his place, would be to tell you about a judge who owns a car wash where the police officers have their vehicles serviced. A subscriber to this YouTube channel was inspired to make a public records request for her hometown sheriff's department. She started with the Sheriff's Department Handbook, which described that sheriff's deputies were to take their cruisers to the local car wash for regular exterior washes. When she asked for a copy of the contract for that car wash, she was told no such record existed. She then went to the Secretary of State and found that the car wash was owned by a local judge. But that judge, informing the car wash business, had spelled his name incorrectly and had also failed to disclose that he owned the car wash where the police officers were paying him to take their cars to be washed in his financial disclosures, which is required by law. So we thought that it would be a good idea to show you what happens if a judge not only is failing to make their proper disclosures, but if they cheat when they are either appointed or elected to the bench in the community where you live. This is Cindy Hendrickson, and she was a prosecutor in Santa Clara County working under the management of District Attorney Jeff Rosen. She wanted very badly to become a judge. And so on December 2, 2016, she sent an email to Stanford Law Professor Michelle Dauber, and she sent her resume and arranged for a meeting to get Ms. Dauber's support. The problem is, Cindy Hendrickson sent this email from her government email account. At the time, Michelle Dauber was working on an election to recall Judge Aaron Persky, and Cindy Hendrickson must have imagined it would be a good idea to take his place in case Ms. Dauber was successful in her campaign. Ms. Dauber was also working on issues related to the local sheriff at the time, because the Me Too movement was strong, and there had been a number of public records released related to text messages that had been exchanged between those sheriff's deputies in Santa Clara County. Many of these messages actually were sent on duty or pertained to official responsibilities. And I will give you an example. Mr. Morrissey uh, commented referencing a colleague, um, and he said he made statements about forcing inmates to perform oral sex on officers in exchange for ramen soup packets, specifically, quote, so a blowjob for soup seems fair, right? later asking how many soups to have your ass licked. Now, this is really misogynistic and really in a... Stanford law professor Michelle Dauber teaches constitutional law at Stanford. She used her First Amendment rights and the democratic process to influence this election with voters because she used the public records obtained from the Sheriff's Department related to text messages that were appalling during the Me Too movement. But what she did in her campaign to recall Judge Persky and the campaign to elect Cindy Hendrickson to the bench may not have been as transparent or as fair. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm here to see Eric. I'm getting some access to some records. Okay. Evelyn, yep. nice to meet you. My name is Susan. Susan. And this is Steve. And this is Joe. And Hi, they're, they're going to film. Hi, Steve. <laughs> okay, hold on. What was your name? Uh, Evelyn. And uh, Eric told Joe he's coming? Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, the public affairs manager. Okay, great. I appreciate it. We're very excited to see these records. Shortly before I went to the voter office to demand access to public records, 
I had been at a Democratic event where Senator Jim Bell was hearing a presentation on the criminal justice system. Jim Bell had been actively involved in the 2016 to 2018 election with Stanford Law Professor Michelle Dauber. And when I appeared at the voting office shortly after this meeting, Evelyn told me that from 2016 to 2018, she had worked as an election specialist for the state. And so I found that while Evelyn was very cooperative on the day that I took cameras in to demand access to public records, a few months after, and a global pandemic, Evelyn hasn't been quite so helpful in getting me access to records related to that election. Lynn Mendez is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Uh, hi, Evelyn. This is Susan Bowsey calling. We spoke last week about turning on so that it was visible the Cindy Hendrickson campaigns for 2018. It's now been four business days or three business days since we spoke. It's been a weekend. I still can't get access to these records. It's very concerning that I'm having this much difficulty getting them. I gave you my email. I have not heard back. My email is Gilroy Bassey at Jen. And as I said, we are working on this right now. I have several reporters. This is holding us up. We need remote access. They were able to turn on Jeff Rosen's disclosures before. I don't understand why it is that there are one, two, three, four, five entries for Ms. Hendrickson for 2018, and none of them are visible to the public except for one, the paper copy that we discussed. So I would really appreciate you calling me back. You told me you are the person in charge of public records. This is a voting issue. It is a critical voting year and public confidence in our voting system is very low and it is disturbing that I am having this much difficulty getting records from two years ago. I would appreciate a call back and I would appreciate an email if you cannot turn these records on, I would like to have them immediately or I'm going to need to walk into the office and inspect these records and photograph all of them. Please. Our team is investigating whether or not when Michelle Dauber was working as a Stanford University professor, if the emails that we obtained indicate that there may have been some interference in the 2018 election. Those emails were between Michelle Dauber and District Attorney Jeff Rosen at a time period when Jeff Rosen himself was running for re-election. Santa Clara County District Attorney Jeff Rosen also ran his political campaign from 2016 to 2018. It was a political campaign called Smart Justice. And as he told the public and the media that he opposed the recall of Judge Aaron Persky and that the independence of the judiciary needed to be supported, his office was secretly providing research and information in order to get Cindy Hendrickson, one of his prosecutors, put on the bench in Santa Clara County. And that required getting Judge Persky recalled. Lying to the public during a political campaign is not illegal. However, using public resources for your political campaign appears to be a problem for Mr. Rosen and Cindy Hendrickson. We found over 6,000 emails between Mr. Rosen's office and Michelle Dauber during these political campaigns, and most of those emails came from Cindy Hendrickson, Jeff Rosen, and Jeff Rosen's top-level sexual assault DA, Terry Harmon but the emails alone didn't seem to bother anybody. So I'm taking a little skills that I learned from some First Amendment auditors who are recording the police and seeing if I can help explain it a little bit better. As when I was in private practice, I had a client and the client wanted things done. You know, they had certain goals and they had certain interests that they wanted absolutely protected. And so you were more focused on your client. And um, a DA's job, um, is to be focused on on everything, on making sure that the defendant is held accountable, but that they're treated fairly and they're only held responsible for what they did, no more, you know, maybe no less, um, and then to make sure that the victim gets compensation, um, gets some sort of redress, but the victim is not our client. 
And sometimes victims disagree with us about what a sentence is going to be. And we can't make sentences stiffer in the cases where the victims, you know, want more uh, and, and lighter in the cases where the victims are more forgiving. We need to hold the defendant accountable in the way that other similarly situated defendants would be held accountable in Santa Clara County. So we have an interest that takes into account both sides, which requires us, I think, to have that good relationship with the defense so that you make sure that they're bringing us all the information. It's so important that as a society, and especially in the criminal justice system, that we root out, um, you know, any, you know, not only actual prejudice, which I think is you know, that's less of a problem, but even the appearance, so that everybody, because it's, it's sort of this insidious effect, um, if, it's, if it exists at all, then when a person of color feels that they didn't get a fair shake, it's always going to be in their head, is it because I'm a person of color? So, so I'm, you know, one thing that's very important for me is to just make sure that, to the extent I can, that I be sensitive to that and so that if there's ever an opportunity to root out um, not only obvious actual prejudice, which like I said, I don't think is such a big problem, but the appearance of it. The emails we obtained through a public records request show that Michelle Dauber, Cindy Hendrickson, and the district attorney Jeff Rosen worked together in a manner that certainly assured that Brock Turner was going to be convicted of sexual assault and Judge Persky was going to be recalled. And part of what they did was work together to make sure that certain disfavored media and social media and freelancers were kept away from the story, the information, and the truth. And this created a false narrative in mainstream media surrounding this story. And that included a relationship that Cindy Hendrickson had with a man known as Scott Largent, who for a time was an associate of mine working on these issues. This is following the arrest. This is in downtown San Jose at the main jail. During the political campaigns in Santa Clara County, I got to know Scott Largent and his grandmother. I also got to know her caregivers, and they endorsed Scott, and they knew he was having a hard time with the local district attorney's office. Scott had been arrested multiple times, and he was also subject to a domestic violence restraining order that was requested by his own mother and these can be difficult issues for families to address. But it is because of that restraining order that was issued in 2016 that Scott became obsessed with the Domestic Violence Council, which is where Cindy Hendrickson had a position for a long period of time. And, you know, this is gonna sound funny, but sometimes, you know, a 211, a robbery suspect, can be refreshing compared to a con artist, I'm gonna, I'm gonna broaden it, not just con artists, because con artists are a segment, but fraud defendants, someone who is willing to betray the trust of a close friend to for monetary gain is one of, to me, the most least forgivable crimes. And I, I realize, I, and I, I mean, there's obviously sexual assault and there's homicide, so I don't mean to be making some grand pronouncement affecting all, but there's just something uniquely despicable about all that. Victims. Really, Scott? Jeff Rosen is going to have a heyday with you when he prosecutes you. Really? He needs to get a restraining order against you from going to any no, court I would, or any I would meeting. Count on Jeff Rosen. You are a wreck, you Susan. You and you're a what star you've done witness. What you people is horrible. I don't want anything to do with your criminal case. I think you're guilty. Oh, okay. It was when I heard Scott say those words that I realized that Scott had been working with the district attorney and Cindy Hendrickson to protect their political campaigns rather than opposing them as he often professed. Because a month after meeting Scott, I was in the court file room investigating cases, and Scott came over to that court file room and was harassed by Jack Solario and other Santa Clara County Sheriff's deputies. And I realized at that moment that I was being prosecuted for what was done by the police officers that was actually criminal because they violated my rights when they seized my phone and broke my hand and illegally searched my phone. But the DA prosecuted me for violating a local rule that is put into place by judges and lawyers and not the state legislature because it's not part of the penal code. 
and that means that Cindy Hendrickson is now part of a group of judges that has an ability to keep the media away when the media is investigating those judges and attorneys that are engaged in public corruption. And this is what Cindy Hendrickson was doing that is the equivalent of her car wash. She now sits in domestic violence court cases. I'm aware that just like she gave Michelle Dauber information and resources from her office when she was a DA, she did the same for Scott Largent in a case involving attorney Heather Allen. And Cindy Hendrickson now has the ability to order attorney's fees awards for different attorneys. And there have been reports that she's been doing it for attorneys who are associated with a nonprofit known as Women SV. And this is a nonprofit that caters to domestic violence victims victims from very wealthy areas, including Los Altos and Palo Alto. And Ruth's group purports to give victims services, when in reality, Ruth appears to be working with the divorce attorneys to get more attorney's fees for the abusers and the people who have the most money in the county. And Cindy Hendrickson has been awarding attorney's fees to attorneys associated with Ruth Patrick's group, including Jim Hoover and Nicole Ford and Sean Ondrick. And all of these attorneys are now making money from Cindy Hendrickson, whose husband is good friends with Ruth Patrick, as is Cindy Hendrickson. And Cindy's husband donated artwork to Ruth Patrick's nonprofit, and that artwork was used as a campaign opportunity for the district attorney, for Cindy Hendrickson, and for others during the 2018 election. So when the district attorney announced that he was prosecuting members of the sheriff's department related to a bribery scheme involving the 2018 election, we thought it was interesting because it appears to us that Jeff Rosen, in fact, has more to hide and worry about that election than any sheriff's deputies do. And so Mr. Rosen will continue to prosecute that case, and we will continue to investigate that 2018 election. And we're going to ask you to please share this video and to please reach out to the Santa Clara County Voter Registrar Office and have them open up the records for Cindy Hendrickson and that 2018 campaign.